just to make sure that I say this on the front end, legitimately, and I have it here written down in my, my list, there are six guys who have, not, not saying that every case is the same, obviously, but six mm-hmm. guys who I think legitimately have an MVP type case this season. Six. I think realistically, when it came down to it, they pigeonholed it to a two-man race. I think that ultimately did a disservice to Shea Gilgis Alexander, who got left out of the Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic conversations. I want to make sure on the front end I give Shea his flowers because I don't know how the official votes are going to shake out. But the fact that he, as the lone all-star on that roster, led the Thunder to the one seed in a conference that we just are talking about is unbelievably loaded with talent and depth has them sitting at the best record in that conference and has them at home court advantage all the way through the conference finals if they can get there in the West. So want to make sure that he gets his flowers, putting up ridiculous numbers for that team. And of all the, the guys in this conversation, you can have an argument. He might be the best defender on this list too as well. So That's true. Want to make sure he gets his flowers up front before we get into any any more conversation. They both have such good cases to stand alone. There's nothing that you need to say to be like, oh, well, Yoke is this or Donchus is this. Like, no, they all have their own individual cases that are so good. Mm -hmm. But I think if I had a vote this year, my MVP would actually be Luka Donchus. (laughs) Okay, okay. Who did you pick? My MVP is Luka Doncic. <laughs> I was, I, I, the last, I was, I was telling you before we started recording, right? I put this together mm. in preparation for this episode a couple weeks ago. Just first thoughts, laid everything out, and I had the order Jokic, Luka, Shea. And I felt very comfortable with that at the time. Um, and I just really liked the last couple of days, sat back, thinking a lot, going back through the whole year. And one of the biggest things that that stood out to me is when I think Luka, I think Jokic is the best player in the NBA. And we've been saying that for a couple of years now. I think Luka had the best individual season this year. I think that him putting up essentially 34 Basically 10 assists and 9.2 rebounds while also averaging what I believe is a career high in steals. Uh, Definitely a better defender, probably his best defensive season. Not probably, I think it was his best defensive season in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of that has to do with the complimentary pieces around him. Um, And he was able to engine this team in the back half of the season all the way to ultimately finishing up with 50 wins and what – we're going to keep saying it is a loaded Western conference um, and they end up at the five seed on top of the fact that they dealt with so many injuries this year. Um, they were one of the most injured teams this season. He just is one of the most gifted offensive players in NBA history, bar none. And I think what really put it over the top for me is I sat here and I thought about, okay, if this isn't Luca's MVP season, and I know this might not be the best way to think about it, but again, you have to really split hairs when we're getting this marginal because, again, I I think from what I've seen so far and like the early votes that have come out, Jokic is probably going to win this award. 1,000% deserves to win this award too. Like, like I said, I had Jokic as my MVP for a good chunk of the season. And I 100%, I could make a full blown argument like I am right now for Jokic to win some more too. But if with the numbers that I just said, the 34, 10 and nine, 50 wins in this Western conference, like what more could Luca do? Right. So like, if this isn't the, the MVP stat line from a numbers perspective that you want to get on the advanced stats, like some people do, have done in the past for Jokic as much. Like I've gone through and looked at a bunch of advanced stats, EPM, box score plus minus, like a whole bunch of them. Luca is right there 
Like Jokic might be ahead of him, but Luca is there. The eye test is obviously like leaps off the page for Luca. Um, so I was back and forth a ton, but I ended up leaning with Luca Doncic for my MVP pick. Yeah, man, I agree. I'm not gonna lie. I really thought she was gonna say Jokic. I don't know why. I just had a feeling he, I thought she was gonna say Jokic. If we would have recorded yesterday, I I might have. Like genuinely, <laughs> it's that it was that close. Like yeah. I was debating up until. Like I said, 30, 45 minutes ago. And even as I was just going through that, as he was doing the intro, I'm like, maybe it is Jokic. Like, it's such a tight, tight race. Like I, I mentioned earlier, like, if they could give out two awards this year, I, I wish they could, bro. Because both of them are unbelievable. And you could put together incredible MVP cases for both of them. So my reasoning is pretty much similar to what you were saying i mean the biggest thing with luca has always been the wins right he's always i mean he always have had mvp numbers he just mm -hmm. hasn't had you know the the team success overall to back them up and my biggest thing was like stats wise in general just the you know the regular counting stats he's stats are insane what is it? it's like 434 and almost 10 assists and nine rebounds. Like it's insane. I think believe shooting his career high and his three point percentage, like 38% on 10 threes a game. Like the stats are insane. Great. It's the same for Jokic as well. Like Jokic's stats are also insane. Right. But the biggest thing is, you know, the 50 wins, like I said, in a stacked Western conference, stacked Western conference. Now, granted in a normal year, if you want to say, yeah, uh, Jokic is a two seed, the Mavericks got the five seed. Um, I'd hear you out, and you still could have that case, but it's like 100%. the five seed has 50 wins this year, so it's not like right. it's a it's a huge drop off. So for me, um, it's the team success, um, him turning around the team, like you said, them dealing with injuries, him having another big thing to me was him having a bunch of MVP moments this year, mm -hmm. like scoring I believe what was it 70 points in a game this year, well, 73. like three 73, the uh, countless ridiculous stat lines, the ridiculous games that like he's had an MVP level season through and through. Um, so I just feel like to me, kind of like to me, the biggest thing that you said that I agree with you was like, if not this year, then when? Because right. it's like, th this is an MVP level season to me. Like, and I just feel like for me personally, I could be biased because every year he's been in the league, I've been like, I'm picking him to win MVP to start a season. <laughs> but this is the first year where I'm like, okay, he legitimately, I feel like, has the best case to win it. Granted, like Jokic, it's not an anti Jokic take. Like, he, if he Jokic wins it, it's not like, oh my God, Luca got robbed. But to me personally, I just think that Luca, like you said, had the best season this year. So to me, I would give it to Luca. Um, like you said, I do see as well that I feel like Jokic is probably going to win it, um, just mm -hmm. based off of all the stuff that I'm seeing, which is very interesting considering like that voter fatigue. Well, I was going to say the voter fatigue hasn't really kicked in. But again, then again, it kind of did last year when Embiid right. won it. And now they're probably like, okay, we didn't get it to Jokic last year. We should probably give it to him this year. But, I mean, I know that plays a factor into it. And I guess another thing, honestly, that I was thinking about was, like, before, the, like, beginning of the season, like, as crazy as how uh, as crazy as the MVP race is that we're talking about right now and how close it is between three of these guys, two, but even three of these guys, including Shea, Beginning of the season, like Embiid was actually running away with it, and it was not close. Mm -hmm. And if you really think about it, it's like Embiid averaging about like thirty-five points a game. Um, you know, I believe he dropped what he dropped seventy in a game as well against the Spurs yeah. this year. Like Luca's kind of done the same thing, but it's not as hyped up as in the beginning of years when uh, Joel Embiid was kind of making his dominant run. You know what I mean? I feel like Luca's been right. just as dominant, have just as crazy moments, but it's not getting as hyped i want to say is like as to when joel and b was doing it in the beginning of the season but i guess that's another thing that kind of ties into it as well i just think that this season overall for luca has been an mvp level season first in the league he's gonna he won the scoring title like i said 33.9 so basically 34 points a night second in assists only to tyrese halliburton per game he was 15th in rebounds per game i, I actually ended up being 16th um, but I'm pretty sure all 15 people in front of him were centers. So right. <laughs> uh, nearly triple-double averages at, you know, again, almost 34 points a night. Um, six straight 30-point triple-doubles this season as well. That was an NBA record. Just – you mentioned it, the MVP moments. He had 50 and 15 on Christmas. He put up a 29-point triple-double in the first half earlier this year. Just – 
unbelievable video game numbers from him all year. On a nightly basis, he pulls out a couple of passes that would be some of the best passes in NBA history for a lot of other players if they were on for their real. mixtapes. Like, he is unguardable at all three levels. He's one of the most unique players in terms of using his body and, and his pace and the deceleration. Like, he, he just is having, and I well, not having, it's over, had to me what I think is – the best individual season this year. So yeah, that's why I ended up getting my pick. That's why I ended up getting your pick. Um.